Hello students, uh, today we will discuss the topic about the depletion layer of the PN junction diode, the biasing of the PN junction diode and the VI characteristics of the PN junction diode. In this session, we will discuss the following contents. We will first quickly revise the representation for both N-type and P-type semiconductor. Then we will discuss how the unbiased PN junction diode is constructed and how the depletion layer is, has been formed in the unbiased PN junction diode. Then we will discuss the biasing of the PN junction diode. There are two types of biasing. One is forward biasing and the reverse biasing. Then we will discuss at the end the VI characteristics. It's fo both forward and reverse bias characteristics. So let quickly discuss the representation of N-type and P-type semiconductor since it is very useful in understanding the construction of the PN junction diode. So this is the N-type and P-type representation. In the N-type, we have the free negatively mobile ion electrons and these are the thermally generated electron hole pairs. These are the ions which are due to the impurity atoms and these are positively charged immobile ions and we have the holes which are the positively charged area act as a minority charge carrier in the N-type semiconductor. While in P-type semiconductor, we have the holes as a majority charge carrier which are mobile in nature. Then these again, it has same electron hole pairs due to generation due to the uh, temperature and these are the acceptor ions or the uh, uncompensated negative charged ion which is due to the boron impurity in the P-type semiconductor and these are the electrons which act as a minority charge carrier in the P-type semiconductor. So let us discuss the construction of the unbiased PN junction diode. Unbiased PN junction diode means when there is no external voltage is applied across the PN junction diode. right? So this is the single silicon crystal we have in which half of the portion is doped with the N-type semiconductor and half of the uh, portion is doped with the P-type semiconductor. This is the situation at just initial doping at the time of the construction in which we can see in the P-type semiconductor we have the majority as a holes and acceptor ions or these are the immobile ions along with it. While in N-type semiconductor we have the electrons as a majority charge carrier with the donor ion or the positively charged ion. So let's start with the diffusion process. Now let's see what will happen as soon as the doping has been done in these two portion. So let's discuss the formation of depletion layer in the unbiased PN junction diode. So in the silicon crystal half of the portion is doped with the P-type semiconductor in which the concentration of the hole is high while another half of the portion is doped with the N-type semiconductor in which the concentration of the electrons is very high. So due to the thermal energy and this concentration gradient in these two regions we have the process called as the diffusion which will start at the vicinity of the middle of the silicon crystal. So electron and holes in the middle of the region they will uh, due to the diffusion process they will recombine and leave behind a region which is depleted of the free charge carrier. This uh, region will create a dipole which will uh, uh, develop a restraining force and act as a barrier to the flow of the majority charge carriers. So, but this is the weak electric field. So, it, uh, it will not oppose the uh, diffusion process and further diffusion process will be there and electron and hole recombination will be there. And as you can see the electric field is more comparison to the previous case as we, and I have noted with the E2 it is much more than the E1 as in the previous case. So this restraining force will st uh, stop the process of the diffusion. As you can see the electrons are repelled by the uh, negatively charged ions while the holes are uh, repelled by the positively charged ions. So this will stop the uh, process of the diffusion and equilibrium has been uh, reached. So we get a region called depleted of the free charge carrier called as the depletion region. This region denoted by the green color is also called as the space charge region because spin the uh, because it consists of the negatively charged ion and the positively charged ion and the width of this region is called as the depletion width and it will uh, create a potential or a barrier potential which is required by this majority carrier to cross this junction. In the case of the silicon semiconductor this barrier potential is required is 0.7 volt while for the germanium this barrier potential required is 0.34. So this is also called as the barrier height means uh, this much of uh, barrier potential should be overcome for the flow of the majority charge carrier in the PN junction. So let us discuss the biasing of the PN junction diode. PN junction diode is said to be biased when an external voltage is applied across its junction. Depending upon the polarity of the voltage, uh, PN junction can be biased in two ways. One, it can be biased in the forward biasing manner and another is the 
reverse biasing manner. So uh, let us discuss the first forward biasing. This is the unbiased pH injection diode we have studied in the last slide, and we have seen how the depletion layer is formed, and this region is depleted of the free charge carrier. Now, as soon as the voltage is in, uh, connected to this pH injection in such a manner that the positive terminal is connected with the p-type semiconductor, and negative terminal is connected to the n-type semiconductor, diode is said to be forward biased. Please make sure that the voltage should be more than the cutting voltage for the flow of the current in the P injection. Let's see how it will flow. This battery will create the positive potential near the P-type semiconductor and negative potential near the N-type semiconductor. These potential will repel the majority carrier and penetrate into the depletion region. As you can see, it will uh, create the depletion region which will be reduced and it will offer the low resistance. Now the diffusion process uh, will be started, uh, that is majority carrier flow in the N-type and P-type semiconductor and as you can see there will be a flow of the majority current, right, and you will get an exponential current. So uh, if we talk about, uh, if we brief this spicing, so when we increase the voltage, uh, we have seen that it will recombine with the ions present in the depletion region and it will compensate those ions and the number of compensated ions will get decreased and so the depletion region width will be reduced and it will offer the low resistance which will uh, help the diffusion process of the majority carriers in the n-type and p-type semiconductor and we will get a diode current due to these majority carriers which will rise exponentially with the increase in the voltage, right? So let's discuss the second type of biasing that is reverse biasing of the PN junction diode. A PN junction diode is said to be reverse biased when the positive terminal of the battery is connected with the n-type semiconductor and negative terminal of the battery is connected with the p-type semiconductor. This arrangement makes this pn junction diode to work in the reverse bias condition. These are the minority carriers. As you can see in the p-type semiconductor, we have the electron as the minority carrier and n-type semiconductor, we have the holes and soon we will see that the current will, which will flow in this reverse bias condition is due to these minority carriers. So we will talk about them a uh, little later. Uh, let's discuss uh, about the majority carriers. What will happen to these majority carriers when, the, when this reverse bias conditions will be established? So, uh, holes are the reservoir in the positive potential and the electrons are there. So, this negative potential will try to attract these holes and uh, absorb them. And as you can see, this will widen the depletion layer and we get uh, these depleted charge carriers and we can see that the depletion width will be increased effectively in the reverse bias condition and this increase in the depletion width will uh, increase the restraining force or the uh, barrier potential which will make hard for the diffusion process occur for the flow of the majority carriers. Now, but this uh, depletion region or this high electric field region uh, will uh, create, uh, will support these minority carriers and this will be attracted easily uh, by the positive potential of the uh, these eyes and these holes will be attracted easily by the negative potential of these eyes and you will get a minority current in the anti-clockwise direction, right? So as you can see, uh, this is the reverse bias characteristics. Uh, this VZ denotes the breakdown voltage. So up to breakdown voltage, you will get an almost a constant current uh, which is called as the I0 or denoted by the IS and which is due to the minority current and which is almost constant at particular temperature as these minority carriers are due to the thermal generated uh, thermal generation of the minority carriers. So you can see uh, as soon as the reverse bias voltage is increased, uh, you have the combination with the ions is get decreased and the uncompensated charge carrier in the depletion region get increased. So the depletion region width will be increased and it will uh, increase the restraining force and it will offer the very high resistance to the majority current. Now at this majority current will give me a saturation current up to voltage, breakdown voltage. But after breakdown voltage, the current will rise suddenly as we can see, it is due to the breakdown mechanism. This is called as the avalanche and breakdown. So let's discuss the VI characteristics of the uh, PN injection diode. VI characteristics tells about the behavior of this diode when it is connected in the network. So we should have the knowledge uh, about the uh, behavior of the diode. So now we will uh, see how the VI characteristics can be plotted and uh, it is the lab setup we have, this is the circuit diagram in which we have the rheostat arrangement in which we, I will vary the input voltage 
and this is the voltmeter which is connected in parallel with the pn junction diode and this is the ammeter which is connected in series uh, with the pn junction diode and this load resistance is connected uh, the purpose of this load resistance is to limit the current flowing through this pn junction diode so we will uh, see how we will divide this characteristics into three parts as uh, you can see uh, this is the forward bias characteristics uh this uh, before that uh, let discuss uh, the cutting voltage of the silicon and germanium that for the silicon the cutting voltage is about 0.7 volt and the germanium we have the 0.3 volt means this much of barrier potential is required for the flow of the majority current so uh, i can divide this character string into three colors as you can see in the red color and the green color and the blue color so this defined in three regions for the first region that means the uh, when the voltage across the pn junction diode is below the cut in voltage the current is almost zero which is flowing through this pn junction diode means the there will be no majority current flow in the pn junction diode because uh, the barrier potential will restrict the flow of this majority carrier as we have already studied and it will offer a very high resistance into the majority carrier flow now as we approach to the cut in voltage the current will start increasing suddenly and this is shown in this portion and as you have seen there is some uh, non linear relationship between the voltage and the current means few majority carrier will uh, cross the junction and you will get a some majority current but as soon as the forward bias voltage is increased further uh, the cut in voltage you will get a sharp rise in the forward current and you can see uh, there will be a very heavy flow of the majority carrier and uh, through the junctions and you will get a sudden rise in the current we have the maximum forward current uh, which will limit the uh, current which can flow in, uh, in the and uh, through any diode it can be found in the specification of the uh, diode right so let us discuss the second portion of the vi characteristic that is reverse bias characteristics of the pn junction diode so this is the same setup uh, which i have used for plotting the forward characteristics of the diode but when i plot for the reverse bias characteristics i will uh, do two changes first i will reverse the direction of the this diode and second uh, i will replace this milliampere range of the ammeter with the microampere range of the uh, ammeter to measure the saturation current right so this is the reverse bias characteristics highlighted in the third quadrant of the graph vi graph and uh, you can see vz denotes the breakdown voltage uh, that is uh, pi also called as the piv of the diode that is peak inverse voltage of the diode Uh, PIV is defined as the uh, maximum reverse voltage which a diode can sustain without any breakdown. So the value of this PIV for any diode can be found in the diode specification sheet. Right? So we can study the behavior of the diode in the reverse bias condition to for the two portion. One when the voltage uh, across this reverse bias diode is kept below the general voltage or the breakdown voltage, and uh, another portion is that when the voltage exceeds this uh, breakdown voltage then see what we will see uh, that uh, there is a sudden rise in the current uh, so uh, when the voltage across the, the reverse bias diode is kept below the uh, general voltage you will get a constant uh, saturation current which is due to the thermally generated minority carriers and we have seen that uh, in this uh, there will be no majority carrier flow due to the high uh, barrier potential uh, in the depletion layer so uh, this uh, saturation current or this minority current is a temperature dependent quantity so at a particular temperature it is almost constant but when we increase the temperature the covalent bond breaks and the minority uh, carrier will be increased so the minority uh, this saturation current will increase right it is mathematically found that uh, for every 10 degree rise of the temperature this reverse saturation current will double right and for every 1 degree centigrade uh, rise in temperature there will be 7% rise in the saturation current so this is about the saturation current uh, that is the portion below the breakdown voltage but once the voltage across the breakdown voltage exceeds so uh, the current will suddenly rise or abruptly rise due to the permanent breakdown that is called as the general breakdown or the avalanche breakdown because due to the very heavy flow of the majority charge carrier will be done due to the breaking of the covalent bond there will be due to the high electric field and due to the collision so we get a constant uh, you know current uh, sudden rise in the current after the breakdown voltage right so this is all about the vi characteristics uh, let's uh, end here thank you very much